I find a lot of enjoyment in exploring games from the 2000s and 2010s, especially those that seem a little too good to be true. I'm talking about game series with just a few too many entries that make you think, huh, there sure are a lot of those, can any of them actually be any good? Aside from reasonable sequels and fan service, and especially regarding a less popular franchise, when the number of games in a series reaches not just above 10, but can be counted in tens, I feel like you've got to wonder what's going on and take a deeper look into the brand. And today, I want to take a deeper look into the Pets series. The original Pets games, with a Z in case you were wondering if it's cool, started off in the late 90s with PF Magic's Dogs, your computer pet, which played a bit like a desktop pet, and it was kind of revolutionary, with multiple sequels that added cats, oddballs, and... No, um, nope, those were the only ones. When will I escape the virtual babies? It seemed like Pets was well on its way to becoming a household pet sim name. That is, until Ubisoft entered the picture. Every Pets series after 2002 was published by Ubisoft, the same publisher of the Imagine series, another of these series with way too many games and, in my experience, not a great track record. And every Pets title that was published by Ubisoft no longer had anything to do with PF Magic, so we've already ditched the original developer, concept, and platform. Not off to a great start. The Pets series covers around 50 games total, or even still around 40 if you don't count any of the OG CD-ROM titles or their ports, which makes me suspicious because that's a lot of games to reuse the same premise of playing with pets over and over. There was even a Pets physical toy line at one point, which I initially thought was a Virtual World tie-in product that I somehow missed during my exhaustive video on that same concept but these plush unlocked passwords online that you then used in the original DS games, which isn't really the same thing. There was still in fact an Ubisoft virtual world though, and I discovered that including the Imagine Games area, there was also a pets section. So I think it's official, I have to cover this whole site at some point, but for now, I'm just gonna stick to the physical pets games. And the main thing I'm wondering is, can all 40 of these shovelware titles still be fun and unique each time, or does caring for all these pets just become a repetitive and boring gameplay loop? Well, there's only one way to find out. To the animal shelter! Welcome to the Jellyverse Precious Pets Pound! Because there are so many of these games to sift through, I've corralled them all into their appropriate kennels by animal type, and I'll play a few of each animal's games to really try and get the full picture. It's pretty common for titles to vary across different ports, so I'll play on as many varying systems as I can too. Also, maybe a bit controversial, but the pet shelter didn't allow any animals that were published before 2004, because it deems them to be essentially a separate series from the games after Ubisoft's takeover, and visually upsetting. Can you believe that? Well, rules are rules, so I won't be playing any of the original PF Magic PC or Game Boy Color games for that reason. So that narrows it down to a measly 40 different titles to work through. Full disclosure, that number might not be correct because some names and covers vary between regional releases and it gets hard to keep track of, so I'm not 100% on how accurate that total is, but I do know that it's still a lot. I want to rate each game on how cute the animals look, which is arguably the main point, how fun or decent it is as a pet care sim, and if either of those points make it overall worth it to play. And to start, we're heading over to the shelter's cat condo to find out if these virtual felines will have you feline fine or leave you crying. <laughs> 2006's Cats was released for Windows and Nintendo DS, and while I figured the PC version would likely be a lot more involved due to its memory, it was kind of impossible to find virtually, so I played the DS game instead. I started off by giving my newly adopted kitten Jammy lots of pets, and I could tell that she liked it by the way her head bobbled around. I also brushed her and tried playing with this single ping pong ball that was the only thing in my inventory, but Jimmy was not very interested. She didn't really chase it and just batted it off screen. <sighs> so much for raising the next feline table tennis world champion. Aww. 
After that intense workout, Jammy fell asleep, and I noticed that she was hungry, so while she was sleeping, I tried to figure out how to feed her, which was harder than I thought. Clicking on the food and food bowl in my inventory wasn't doing anything, and I was really starting to get nervous that my poor kitten was going to perish within five minutes of adopting her, when I got a text message in-game. I was hoping it was going to be some kind of help message to tell me how to finally feed my cat, but it wasn't. It was just some rando named Brandon talking about his own cat, which was not helpful. I don't care if you named your cat Caesar, Brandon. My cat needs to eat a Caesar. Salad, that is, because she's starving. It actually turns out it wasn't that serious though, because Jammy already had a filled bowl the whole time, and when she woke up, she just ate on her own. I took a picture of her passed out in a food coma to commemorate the occasion and tried to move on from the trauma. Lastly, I visited the store, which didn't really have a whole lot to offer, but it did have clothes, so we had a little shopping spree where I bought a rainbow collar and this hat that kind of looks like a lampshade. Do you like your trendy new Y2K fit, Jammy? I think she does. With that, I realized that I had pretty quickly exhausted all my options, and there was really nothing left to do aside from aggressively petting my cat and coercing her into a life of table tennis that she'll never truly enjoy. While I don't think it's entirely fair to reduce every 2000s pet care game down to being a Nintendogs imitator, I think it is fair to say that that's exactly what this game is, and it's a pretty bare bones one at that. Aside from buying some clothes and playing bobblehead simulator, there just wasn't really much to do, which made the game feel pretty lifeless. I think Jamie herself looks pretty cute though, especially in her lamp cosplay, so even though the DS graphics expectedly leave a bit to be desired, I'd rate the cat cuteness 3.5 failed ping pong careers out of 5. The care function was just a bit too basic to be engaging though, so I'd rate that 1.5 narrowly avoided catastrophes out of 5. I don't expect this game to deliver perfectly on every front, but it's just missing enough interactivity to make it fun. So overall, I don't think that this pets game is really worth the effort. Sorry, Jamie. The next Cats game in the series was Cats 2, released in 2007, but I thought it might be too similar to the first one, so instead I jumped into 2008's Cats Clan for the DS. Sounds exclusive. I chose my new cat Teddy because she just reminded me of a little teddy bear. Right away, Teddy seemed to have more personality and movement than Jammy, and the house had different rooms for each feature, like a toy box in the playroom and a kitchen with a little feeding minigame. After realizing that I could leave the house, I went to the park in hopes of witnessing a kitty play date, though that went about as well as a cat meetup in the park would go in real life. Both Teddy and the only other cat there were not really interested in being friends, and I sat around for a little bit too long staring at this obnoxious grass texture just waiting for something to happen. I did check this toy box that was at the park in case there was a cool toy they could play with, but it was empty. And come to think of it, the toy box at my own house was empty too, which turns out is because there is no store to buy toys or cool hats in. You can only get new items as rewards for playing with your pet. While this seemed cool at first, I could not seem to actually unlock anything but one shirt no matter what I did. Entering different rooms, dressing Teddy in a cute little outfit with the default clothes, aggressively spam petting her, which even eventually aged her up into an adult. No matter what I did, there was just nothing. I guess I must be missing something to progress. Though I feel like in a kid's game, I shouldn't have to resort to reading help menus and scrambling around just to make the game, like, go. <laughs> and with that, the rose-colored glasses were off. Teddy's fun reactions and animations just kept getting in the way when I was trying to pet her. All of the varying rooms in the house weren't just empty, but also had this tedious, unskippable door opening animation. I of course did like the dress up, but with only one new shirt unlocked, my options were pretty limited, and who would I even show my outfit off to anyway? Definitely not the cat from the park, because she was about as lifeless and two-dimensional as the cheap grass texture she was sitting on. I liked Teddy. She's not super realistic, but her weird proportions and goofy movements when she wasn't stuck in an animation loop were endearing, especially when petting her while she was on her back legs and it kind of looked like she was dancing. For visuals, Cat's Clan gets three dancing teddies out of five, but as far as the care features go, or lack thereof, it's gonna get two low-res grass textures in the park out of five. There wasn't enough to do, and the few extra animations thrown in just weren't enough to make this game enjoyable at the end of the day. So all in all, it turns out Cat's Clan actually belongs in the Catch Trash can.
Aside from Cats 2, there were two more cat-themed pets games left unplayed, but I didn't have high hopes after the disappointment of the two that I played. While Jamie and Teddy and their sick outfits were cute enough, I've always been more of a dog person anyway. Into the dog den. I've actually already played a lot of dogs for Game Boy Advance when I was younger, and I found it pretty fun when I was a kid, at least. Even if my favorite activities were vacuuming the house and eating the virtual chocolate, both of which had nothing to do with my pet dog. I was curious about the PC version, but after realizing that it was made as a Wendy's Kids Meal toy exclusive, I wasn't really sold on that being a high quality game and just didn't have high expectations for it. So instead of the first title, I jumped right into 2007's Pets Dogs 2, and this time we're playing on the Wii. This game had a lot of dog breeds to choose from, but I couldn't help but still pick the Chihuahua and name her Cinnamon. What can I say? I'm predictable. But what was surprisingly not predictable, though, was that this game wasn't a pet sim at all, but an adventure RPG. The plot revolves around this powerful magic hat that my Chihuahua father protects. And coincidentally, there's also an ultra evil bad guy captured in the town jail just down the road from our house. You're right, Chihuahua Dad. It probably would be bad if some evil animal ever stole the hat. <laughs> Good thing that'll never happen. After 30 minutes of tutorial gameplay, Cinnamon and her BFF visited the ultra evil bad guy in jail in the middle of the night. Very sane behavior. And then this crazy thing happened where the bad guy wolf antagonist gaslit Cinnamon into helping him steal the magic cat, and now it's in the hands, um, paws, of an evil animal, which is exactly what we didn't want to happen. And he totally looks so menacing while wearing it. <laughs> the evil wolf uses the hat to break out of jail and rain explosions down on the little doggy town, which is a lot more intense than I was expecting for a kid's game. He destroys buildings, turns all of the animals at the local zoo, that's also run by dogs, I guess, into evil zoo animals, and then disappears. And after that, the main goal was to help the townspeople, the uh, town's dogs, repair the town, which transforms Dogs 2 from an adventure game into a fetch quest simulator. <laughs> fetch is right. For about 40 minutes straight, I just ran around from one end of the map to the other, sniffing out quest items and then running right back. Also, there was this weird new character introduced, who was the Magic Hat's good half personified into this little nutcracker with flippers looking guy named Beat. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm guessing he might be important later on in the story, but it just still felt like a really random addition. Anyway, the fetch quests expectedly got repetitive very fast, so I was just kind of getting tired of playing. But don't worry, I didn't quit before unlocking the fashion house because I just had to see what little hats they had in store for me before leaving the destroyed town of dogs to fend for themselves. I didn't have enough money for a total shopping spree, but I was able to afford a brand new replacement magic hat that basically looks the same, so I ended up saving the day after all anyway. Despite some of the other animals and creatures looking a bit off, the dogs in this game do look really cute. I like that all the breeds are the same size as each other and live in these dog-sized buildings that are decorated like an Animal Crossing villager's house. 4 out of 5 new magic hats for the cuteness factor. Otherwise though, this game is obviously not a pet care sim, so it's kind of hard to judge it as one. As an adventure game, it was a bit slow moving, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. If I had to rate it as a pet care sim though, it was obviously just disappointing, so pet care gets 1.5 weird little nutcracker guys out of 5. Maybe that seems unfair, but I just feel like if I had played this game as a kid because it's labeled as a sequel to a pet care sim, I would have been frustrated that it was something totally different. Maybe things are different across the other ports of this game, but as far as the Wii version goes, and as a pet's title specifically, it just didn't seem fully worth it to play. Maybe you've noticed that I tend to like dressing up the little animals in these games, so I thought, what better choice to play next than 2007's Pets Dogs Fashion for the DS? This time, I played as a little schoolgirl, and after adopting a lab and naming her Milk, I pretty quickly got into the swing of caring for my little cup of dairy. Or, should I say, pup of dairy? <laughs> 
It's because he's because she's milk. Okay, sorry. Despite being named Dog's Fashion, this mostly just played like any other pet care game rather than being all about fashion. I gave Milk some food and water and then tried teaching her some tricks including one which was just called Barkle on the menu. I don't know what I expected it to be, but it was not Milk performing a spontaneous backflip. I don't even know if that's safe. Are dogs supposed to bend like that? She also successfully performed Snap Up, which is whatever this motion is, and Salute. Um, at ease. I don't know what was in that food that I gave her, but it seems to be working. Even though Milk is clearly very talented, training did get kind of tedious. I went to play some mini games to pass the time instead, which is also how you earn coins to buy items in the store. Now, don't tell Milk, but I was really just in this whole adoption business for the fashion, so I got to work farming more coins in the mini games to prepare Milk for another shopping spree. I was very pleased to find little hats for her to wear along with clothes and decided on this one because despite all of the other regular sized clothes, it's so tiny on her head for no reason. Did I realize a little too late once I got back home that it kind of looks like a diva cup? Yes, but it's hard to focus on meaningless little details like that when the whole outfit comes together so nicely. Lastly, I went to enter a competition called the Pretty Dog Contest and prepared for what would clearly be an easy win. Unfortunately, Milk didn't perform well in the trick category, until the freeform section that is, where I spammed her magnificent backflip and she landed it every time. I feel like that should have qualified her for an automatic win, but then the judges raided her outfit and mistakenly didn't think there was a cohesive theme. So I only got second place. I feel like they were just being judgy about the Diva Cup, which is fair. When it comes to visuals, even though Milk is a fashionable, backflipping queen, I have to admit that I don't find her all that cute. It's just something about the proportions of her face, I think, that make her cutest when she's sitting farther away. I still love her, but she's also only won a second place, so she gets three questionable hats out of five for cuteness. The pet care though was pretty decent. While some of the features were a little basic, there was still a lot of variety in the activities, so four out of five backflips for effort. Overall, I think this game is cute and hits the right notes for what I would expect from a pet care sim, so I definitely think it's worth to play if you don't mind some grinding and farming. And speaking of farming, I heard that there were some cool horses with a Z back at the animal shelter's horse hangout that just can't wait to start horsing around. Out of the six horse-themed pets games, I started with Pets Horse Club on PC, where I was dropped right into the action. Well, it was kind of meandering, slow-moving action, but it laid out the basic mechanics and introduced Lily, the main character who's a competitive rider and makes weird dialogue noises. Uh -huh. After a tutorial of rescuing a lost foal, the game took me to the ranch that Lily is volunteering at and wasted no time in handing me quests. There wasn't a whole lot of backstory or detail given right away, like an explanation of who Lily is, why she's here, or where here even is, or why your horse kind of runs like a newborn deer. Okay, that one might just be me. I'm not really well versed on horses, but doesn't the running animation just look clunky and weird? And speaking of clunky, the camera movement while riding is not much better. I think it's supposed to simulate a sort of organic, shaky, cinematic angle, but it's so janky that it mostly just made me a bit motion sick. Luckily, the world that you're riding through is actually pretty scenic for a 2008 CD-ROM game. There's mountainous landscapes, secluded forests, and big open plains that make the riding feel kind of atmospheric. Which is fortunate, because that's most of what the gameplay in Horse Club is. There were other features like breeding, grooming, and taming wild horses, but I mostly just rode around on Lily's horse for the return of long, drawn-out fetch quests. Maybe I'm not into horses enough to see the appeal in simulating riding around for most of the game. I guess that is the main thing you do with horses, but in this game it just felt boring. Also, it's worth mentioning that after I recognized Lily's voice actress from Code Lyoko and searched through her voice acting credits, I saw that she was credited for the character Lily, but in the game Imagine Champion Rider. And it turns out that Pets Horse Club for PC and Imagine Champion Rider on Wii and PC are the exact same game 
game. I know that games are sometimes renamed when released for different regions, but I can't help but also feel that it's a little lazy transferring games from one shovelware series to another. Aside from the questionable marketing and or renaming tactics of the game, Horse Club wasn't the worst. The horses themselves left a bit to be desired. The foals were cute, but the low-res textures, goofy galloping, and especially the uncanny human-like eyes on the adult horses just freak me out a little. But they do look like horses, so I'll give them three uncanny horse stares out of five. The pet care features were pretty decent though. There were mini games for brushing, washing, and hoof picking, and taming mini games for gentling wild horses. While it's nothing super in-depth, the care features are some of the most involved out of all the games so far, so it gets four renamed games out of five. I could definitely see Horse Club's appeal for some laid-back horse care, so I'd say it's worth playing even with the slow pacing and weird dialogue sounds. Uh huh. So, um, remember when I won second place in the pretty dog contest and I was really cool and nonchalant about it? Well, I have a confession. I actually was chalant, and even after playing with horses, I still haven't gotten over it. I want a chance to redeem myself, to show the world that I do have the prettiest dog around. Except this time, it'll be the prettiest horse. Because next, I played 2009's Pets Pony Beauty Pageant on the DS to start my redemption arc. This game started off with the usual, put in my name, talk to a tutorial character, but it surprised me by giving the option to customize my own character, which was a first so far. I could change the color of her shirt and- Oh, okay, that was it. As underwhelming as that was, I'd say being able to customize my own pony definitely made up for it. I gave her the elegant and timeless Alexandria's Genesis, used these spots all over so that she'd look like she was a little ice cream cone covered in sprinkles, and decided to name her Sprinkle, which didn't fit in the name box, so she became Sprinkle with no vowels, like a poorly thought out custom license plate. There were a few different areas to explore, like the stable that housed all the care features like grooming, stable cleaning, hoof picking and feeding, and the field that had training and petting. Each activity had its own separate icon and minigame, which I was grateful for after having some difficulties just figuring out the basics of some of the other games. I started to get these interactions with NPCs that hired me to help train or groom their ponies, and I was glad that they were paying me, because while helping them, all I could think about was the cool hairstyles and gear that their ponies had, and I wanted that for my special little sprinkle. I made my way to the store to first get some food and treats, all that lame stuff for keeping my pony alive or whatever, but I made sure to save enough money for yet another shopping spree. I bought every accessory I could find in the color pink. Saddle, ribbons, hair dye, hoof dye, and by the end of it, Sprinkle was looking like a Neapolitan dream. Since this game is called Pony Beauty Pageant, and there was no way I was going to lose this time with this beauty, I entered the competition area for the dressage contest, because my pony is clearly dressage the best. Apparently, dressage or dressage is actually just the name for like, horse tricks and stuff, so the only requirement was completing the Simon Says-esque minigame, and they didn't even look at Sprinkle's ensemble. But I did still win first place, so I'm gonna count that as a win overall regardless. At this point, I'd visited all of the areas and activities I could find, and from what I played, I think Pony Beauty Pageant isn't too bad. The minigames were engaging enough to not feel too much like a chore, so Pet Care gets 4.5 first place perfect pony trophies out of 5. I just wanted to show off that I want a trophy. <laughs> Also, I think the horses themselves are really cute. Obviously, Sprinkle is the cutest one, but I especially like how big and shiny their eyes are. 4.5 Sprinkle license plates out of 5. While this game is definitely still a grind and doesn't go super in-depth, it did feel the least tedious to play so far, so I think that's worth entering your own pony in a beauty pageant if you want to, as long as you've accepted that you'll never be able to beat Sprinkle. Where horses are just about some of the largest pets you can have, I wanted to see what some of the smaller animals had in store for me back at the animal shelter. In the small animal storage, there were both bunnies and hamsters, and I decided to start with one of the three hamster games. I always thought of pet care sims as almost exclusively for cats and dogs, so I'm curious to see what 2006's Hamster's Life has to offer. And right away, just after loading in, I had pretty high hopes for this game to be fun if it was going to be half as cute as this immaculate title screen. The cute little hamsters on the title screen were actually just the avatars for the more realistic looking models, but the real pet 
pets were still pretty cute too. I picked this yellowish one that reminded me of this meme, named him Macaroni, and was left to explore his cage. I gave Macaroni some water and food, which he sat down to eat like a polite little gentleman. Then I spent kind of a long time just petting him, because the way he squinted and even rolled over on his back made it feel weirdly rewarding, despite nothing actually happening. Aside from feeding and petting, I could also clean Macaroni's cage, brush him, let him outside his cage for a wander, hold him in my hand, which didn't do a whole lot, Okay, and even train him with commands. The training didn't go too well at first, he seemed pretty confused and just gave me the ooh-woo stance in response, but with enough persistence, I eventually taught him a trick called good morning. What kind of trick is that, you might ask? Oh, <laughs> nothing. I just taught my hamster to speak English back to me. Hamster trainer of the year over here. Occasionally, Macaroni wanted to play some mini games that were pretty cute and even awarded prizes like corn, cabbage, and a pair of glasses. All the hamster care essentials. And might I say, Macaroni looked quite dashing and distinguished in his new glasses. He wasn't very interested in playing with this ball that I won though. <laughs> Obviously, I should have known by his glasses. He's far too much of a scholar to dabble in rodent roughhousing. After not too long, Macaroni's menu avatar looked pretty tired and sad, but I couldn't find a way to actually put him to bed or fix it, so I just closed the game. I'm sure he's smart enough to take care of himself from here. After all, he's got glasses. I think Macaroni and his little rodent-y movements were cute and realistic, aside from the whole speaking thing, anyway, so I'd rate his looks four distinguished hamster gentlemen out of five. There wasn't a whole lot to the care aspect, I mean, I still don't get the whole handheld thing, though the mini games were kinda fun, so pet care gets 2.5 hover hands out of 5. I think this game is cute overall and worth a play for some silly fun, just watch out for any evil rich guys that want to steal your English speaking glasses wearing rodent to turn him into an international pop star. Hate it when that happens. With now improved expectations thanks to Macaroni, I headed back to try out a bunny game next where I chose Pets Bunnies Bunch, because what's better than one bunny? A bunch of them! This game only had two color variants to choose from, but I didn't care. Even just one bunny color would be enough for me, because look at these little guys! I am admittedly pretty biased towards rabbits in general, but I still think these objectively have to be the cutest pets I've seen in this series so far. I found myself genuinely smiling and just being happy to hang out with my new little bunny, who I named Mallow, because Marshmallow wouldn't fit. I watched in awe as she ate her food, played with her toys, and hopped around. I also thought the game's general aesthetic was pretty cute too, with the pink themed room and silly animal stations on the TV. Aside from feeding, playing with toys, brushing, and bathing your bunny, which bunny safety PSA you should generally avoid doing in real life by the way, there were also some mini games to play, including a toy toss, egg hunt, and little bunny obstacle course. Mallow would do these excited little hops when we won, so that definitely encouraged me to play well. The mini games awarded a currency to spend at the store, which had food, furniture, and toys, but sadly, no bunny hats or accessories to my dismay. When I came back from the store though, Mallow was waiting to play hide and seek with me, so that made it all okay. When Mallow got too tired, the game would send her to nap time, which was the only game that kind of confused me. It told me to push a button to help her sleep, but then this creepy beat started playing and this weird flower slowly danced up on screen. It just did not seem very peaceful at all, and also stirred up my undertale trauma. The only thing that was left to do was visit the adoption center and get another bunny, because the game is called Bunny Bunch after all. I got the exact same color with no regard for if I might make them up and named this one Ruby after one of my favorite Animal Crossing villagers. When I got home though, I realized that I could only play with one rabbit at a time, which was disappointing because I wanted Mallow to have a friend. Oh well, guess now I have to turn the game off and never touch it ever again. I clearly really liked the look of the animals this time around, so I think the cuteness factor gets a no contest 5 marshmallow bunnies out of 5. The care features weren't bad, I did like the mini games, but I still don't like the idea of teaching kids to bathe their rabbits regularly, and I also can't get over the whole nap time incident. The pet care gets a solid 3.5 creepy flowers out of 5. Even though this is just a shovelware title at heart, I still found it enjoyable to just stare at my little bunny hopping around, so if you're into rabbits, I'd say this game is decent enough. 
So far, I've played with lots of animals and different pet breeds, but cats, bunnies, ponies? It's all too safe! I do still want to play with pets, but this time something fierce, something like a wild animal, like a tiger. And the exotic animal enclosure actually had everything I was looking for in Pets, Wild Animals, Tigers for the DS. This game was definitely the most unorthodox pets game so far, as it started out with the main character's circus performer grandfather signing them up to be animal trainers in the circus. I was a little confused as to where this was going, especially when I was prompted to play this train a bear to balance on a ball game that had very poor graphics and poor controls, but after that unnecessary curveball, the tigers were finally introduced. This vet character walks you through all the main care tasks for the two pre-named tigers, broken down into feeding, grooming, medicine, and affection. While I'm usually always down for a minigame, the feeding in this game had you add numbered sections of meat together to equal the right total, which is not traditionally very fun. Especially when I struggled as a non-math savvy person to reach the exact total, which actually almost made me quit until I realized the goal was to get close enough to the right number, because an exact exact match was seemingly impossible. Whether I missed that instruction in the tutorial dialogue or not, I still feel like this is a terrible idea for a minigame. The grooming section also turned out to be really tedious, with a lot of excessive scrubbing, all while the tiger repeated the same animation and single growling noise on loop. So fun. The first aid area had me match the correct medicine to the ailment, and the affection minigame was more scrubbing the mouse around to pet the right areas. And aside from the second tiger that was left to repeat all of the same steps over again with, and the store to buy new care items, that was pretty much it. It's very likely that there could be more random circus minigames to be unlocked as you continue to play, but I was just really not feeling this one already. I guess it is to be expected. There comes a time in the life of every shovelware series where a game is so unfun to play that you just want to quit after 10 minutes, which is exactly what I did. From math equations to scrubbing simulators, all of the tedium of the care features gets 1.5 meat equation games out of 5. And to be honest, a lot of the time I can overlook poor gameplay at least a little bit if the animals are nice to look at, but in my opinion, these tigers were not. <laughs> They're stuck somewhere between attempted realism, cartoonish features, and crunchy DS graphics, which just makes for a bad time, and a rated one unrelated bear tutorial out of five. It goes without saying that from its monotonous gameplay to the random circus theming, this game is bad and definitely not worth the effort. After that less than favorable experience, I was really hoping that there was still another wild animal game that at the very least didn't have weird circus performer theming since, you know, the title promises wild animals. I pondered a bit as to which game I should choose next and was eventually drawn in by the monkeys. And not just any monkeys, but some pets crazy monkeys for the Wii. Surely these guys will know how to have a good time and take my mind off the disappointment of the tigers. I chose the craziest of the monkeys I could find, out of the two breeds available at least, which was a squirrel monkey that I named Steve, after Steve Webkins for all my Webkins players out there. I took Steve home to a big open house and got right to petting and playing with her. I turned on the TV to watch a five second loop of the game's commercial stock footage, which both Steve and I found pretty lame. So instead, we went right to the closet, which came pre-filled with a ton of clothes and accessories, including glasses, tail rings, and tiny little hats. Tiny is relative. <laughs> Once my monkey was looking fashionable, I checked out the toy box that was also preloaded with toys that Steve seemed to really like. During shower time, I didn't have much indication of if I was doing it right or if Steve was still dirty underneath her cool hat, but the bubble seemed promising, so I moved on. Sometimes after completing certain actions, this little star would tell me that I had unlocked new items, which turned out to be part of a whole list of achievements for each care category. After feeding Steve a stereotypical banana, I spent the rest of the time completing as many of these star tasks as I could, unlocking more toys, food, and clothes as I went. I kept her in this little devil outfit most of the time because I'm just kind of dark and edgy like that. One of the training tasks wanted me to spray Steve with water when she was misbehaving, which neither of us liked very much. But aside from that, it was all pretty straightforward and simple until I just 
couldn't seem to progress any further. So I dressed Steve in a Senorita Awesome type outfit as a farewell gift and said goodbye. <laughs> While I did only play with the squirrel monkey out of what seemed to be a lot of other breeds, I still appreciate Steve's more realistic look and the silly little excited movements, like hopping, clapping, and backflipping. She's almost as good as milk. Cuteness gets four little Steves dressed as cool Santa out of five, a rating that is mostly influenced by all the little clothes. Caring for Steve, though, was just okay. Some of the actions felt tedious or sort of vague and not fleshed out, though I did like the variety. Pet Care gets three out of five stereotypical monkey bananas. I actually found this game kind of fun, which was definitely because of the clear task and reward system that gave me more to do. If you like monkeys, especially crazy ones, then I'd say this game is all right. After playing with Steve, I felt that the wild animal category had successfully found redemption after the whole tiger mess. But while the exotic chapter had come to a close, that still left one more category left. Something mysterious, something unconventional, something miscellaneous. This miscellaneous mart bargain bin is full of pets games that just didn't exactly fit into any of the other categories, so they exist in their own special section. Though none of these games are really that special. We've got baby animals, which is what most of the games start you off with anyway. Fashion for cats and dogs, been there. Some cool activities like sports and beach and even pets countryside for all the cottagecore girlies. All of these games just seemed like more specific or themed titles, nothing too unique or interesting. Except for- wait, what's this down here at the bottom? Pets Fantasy? Okay, I guess we have to play one last game. The DS version of Pets Fantasy comes in two variants, Sunlight and Moonlight, which I assume works like a Pokemon game with each having its own exclusive animals. So instead of either of those, I played the 3DS version in hopes that it just included everything. After a short and vague backstory about the fantasy creatures being attacked and needing to regain their strength, I got right into the real gameplay. Hatching an egg. <laughs> the tutorial let me hatch four eggs right away, and I started with this yellow one, which produced this thing. It's kind of like a fox-cat-chihuahua hybrid, and I guess I don't mind it, though it is both nameless and unable to be given a name, which is lame. The house once again had different rooms for different care functions, like feeding in the kitchen, grooming in the bathroom, you get it, we've seen this before. Another pets game means more mini games, including this Lazy Susan style feeding game, a basketball-esque game in the backyard, and chase the dog thing with the hose while it tries to escape by Mario piping down the toilet. Or the grooming mini game. As much as this was kind of weird, I did like that it was different than the usual scrub relentlessly type of bathing game. The living room and bedroom were both just seemingly empty, though I could pet my creature, so that's good. Mark that off the standard pet care sim checklist. The attic had a game just called Training, where I ran on a discount rainbow road through a bunch of hoops, which was a warm-up for what I guess is traveling back to the pet's magical homeland that has the same game. I don't know, there's not really a lot of explanation here. I didn't really get why I needed to do this, aside from collecting these orbs that seemed to relate to their ambiguous backstory from the beginning, so I ditched that, and next went to something I did know, the dress-up area. I was very pleased to find a variety of little hats and accessories, though apparently this little guy had a preference for what he wanted to wear, which took all the fun out of it. Especially since he decided to wear this? Construction wear chic, I guess. After that, I found myself back in a familiar situation of having exhausted all of the game's options so that all that was left was a lot of monotonous grinding. I did remember that I had three eggs left to hatch though, so I went through them one by one to be greeted by other fantastical creatures, like a dragon, a unicorn, and- oh god. Um, whichever one of the avatar people this thing is. Each of these pets all had their own preferences in each minigame for their favorite food or toy and their favorite clothes to wear, which led us to even more fashion disasters such as Sunflower Pirate and Swashbuckling Santa. At least the unicorn had a sense of cohesion. 
The main goal of the game seemed to be hatching and collecting new creatures and then filling their star power, whatever that is, playing enough to discover all of their minigame favorites and visiting the magic world, which maybe is what lets you hatch more eggs? For being called Pets Fantasy, this game doesn't seem to lean into the fantasy aspect much. I was hoping for more magical elements, like special powers beyond toilet teleportation, but it was really just like any other pet care sim. And like with a lot of these games, the minigames were objectively more tedious than fun, so Pet Care gets 2.5 swashbuckling Santas out of 5. The pets also weren't anything special. I did like the unicorn and the dragon the most, especially the dragon's little running animation. Look at him go! But since the other two were just, let's be honest, abominations, overall I'd rate the cuteness 2.5 uncanny blue creatures out of 5. I experienced a lot of different pets today, and I can't exactly tell if I'm surprised at my findings or if I'm just underwhelmed. Despite my history with Ubisoft's Imagine series, I still can't help but go into this kind of experience each time with a little hope that at least some of the games won't be terrible. And sure, they weren't all awful, but amidst the bad, the boring, and the broken, I'm feeling a lot less hopeful that shovelware games will ever be able to deliver. I just hate to see all these cute, or mostly cute, virtual animals get their reputations tarnished because of some lazy game making. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I'm not impressed with the pet series, but I'm not exactly mad either, just disappointed. Oh. That being said, when I play the next fashion, crazy, cuddly, cuties, animals, rainbows in space edition, will this experience stop me from hoping that that game will be fun to play instead? Of course not, and I'll probably tell you all about it next time too. Hi, welcome to Jelly TV, where I shout out a video that I think deserves some love. If you're into niche 2000s nostalgia like I am, or just enjoy good videos, then I recommend watching The Strange Saga of an Early 2000s Craze by Jordi McNeil. This video is all about competitive cup stacking, something that I always saw from afar but never fully understood. Jordi, who used to cup stack herself, gets into all of it, and really opened my eyes to the history, the culture, and the controversies of such a weirdly specific sport. This video is funny, well-researched, and very high quality, so definitely check it out and the rest of Jordy's channel. A huge thank you to Daniel E from ABQ, Kevin Evans, Shaples, Brett Morgan, Bunzo, Findicano and Irisay, Hayden Campbell, Johan Ake, Lillipuff, Lou, Lucy Likes Tegan and Sarah, Louisa, Luna Stephenson, Mark Kent, M. Wee, Oliver E, Paper Sam, Pharma Mags, Pixel Puppy, Starbit Illustrations, Theodore Nicolaelius, Vivian Valencia, and the rest of my patrons for supporting me. You all mean so much to me that I made these special personalized pet collars that are engraved with your names. After all, you are my perfect patrons. What? I've already used that pun in a Patreon end screen before? Oh, uh, I have to go. My dog just started doing backflips. <laughs> what? What? She's so crazy.